Hey everyone, what is happening? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, we're going to add another one to our Mario Run playlist. So in the last video, we showed you how to make your Mario character do a wall jump. And wall jumps are really fun and awesome to code. In this video, what we want to do is show you how to add the coin pickup feature to your game. So all Mario games, and most 2D platformers for that matter, have coin pickups or additional points. And so that's what we want to do for this video. And let's get started. So here we have our project open in Unity, and I'm going to go ahead and hit play so that you can see what we were able to do in our last video. So normally our character isn't able to jump over really tall walls, but since we were able to add the wall jump feature, we can now make our character jump higher than he normally would. So that's something really cool that we were able to do in our last video in this playlist. But if this is the first video that you've clicked on, make sure that you click on the card up in the top corner of this video so that you can start from the beginning and work your way through this tutorial and eventually get to this video. But for this video, what we want to do is add the coin pickup feature. And to do this, we want to first create a new 3D object to our scene. And so I'm going to click on Create, go to 3D Objects, and we want a sphere, because this is going to be our coin prefab. So right now we're just going to use the basic sphere object that Unity provides for a placeholder for our coin pickup. And what I'm going to do is rename this object to be coin. Coin, or we could even call it coin pickup. Awesome. The next thing that we want to do is add a tag to this object. So to add a tag, you want to make sure that you have the object selected. And then up in the top of the inspector, under the name, we click on this tag drop down menu. Go to add tag, which will then bring you here. And you can click on this plus sign. And then I can type in, let's say, coin. And I'm going to spell it with a capital C. And then let's go ahead and hit save. And then we need to go back to our coin pickup object and assign that tag. So selecting the coin tag for our coin pickup object. So for right now, I'm just going to leave the transform at 000 for the position. And for the scale, I'm going to leave it at 111 because I feel like that's a good size for the coin pickups. The next thing that you want to do is when you create your sphere object, it should come with a sphere collider. But if it doesn't, you need to make sure that you add a sphere collider. And to do that, you can go to Add Component, and then you want to click on Physics, and then Sphere Collider. And that will add this component here. Once you have this component on your sphere object, what you need to do is make sure that is triggered, the option for is trigger is checked or active. And once we've done that, we've created the placeholder object for our coin pickup. And what I'm going to do next is add this object to a folder in our projects window so that it becomes a prefab. And so I'm going to right click on our assets folder. Then I'm going to hit create folder and I'm going to rename this to prefabs. Then I'm going to click on our coin pickup object in our hierarchy and drag it into the prefabs folder. By creating a prefab for our coin object, it makes it really easy to change our scenes and add more coins so that Mario can, or our Mario character, can pick up the coins as he runs along. To do that, you can then just click on the coin pickup object in the project window and drag it into your hierarchy. And you can make as many copies of this coin prefab as you drag into the scene. So right now I have a whole bunch of coin objects and I can just reposition them to, to really wherever I want in my scene. And I'll make one more over here. So now that we've created our coin pickup prefab, the next thing that we need to do is create a UI element so that we can keep track of the score or the amount of coins our Mario character has picked up. So to do this, I'm going to click on the Create button in our hierarchy, go to UI or User Interface, and then click on Text. And so that we can create a text element to display the amount of coins we've picked up. And so right now you can see that our text is kind of off screen. And so to fix this, I'm going to anchor 
this text element to all the corners of our canvas, which was also created when we created this text object. You can see here in the hierarchy we have a canvas object and then our text object. And I'm going to actually rename our text to something like uh, coin score. And then once we've renamed it and we've anchored this element to all corners of our canvas, I'm going to select the bottom corners, you can see with these white triangles, and drag it up to, let's say, 20% at the top of our screen. Then I'm going to center the transform in the left, the top, the right, and the bottom. And now I'm going to scroll down to the text component of this object. And I'm going to change the text value to 0. I'm going to then select best fit for our font size. And we can probably scale our max font size up to something like 100. And then I'm going to center this in the middle of the top of our screen. So right now there's not a lot of formatting that I've added to this text element. And there's not a lot of design. Right now all we have is a single text object to hold the current value of how many coins our Mario character has picked up. But when you're creating your own game, along with all the 3D art and 2D art that you add to your game, you want to make sure that you design your UI elements to be really pretty and also easy to understand so that when people are playing your game they can just look at the screen and understand exactly what's going on with your game and with your UI and what's being displayed. And, but for right now, this is all we need. We need something to display what our current score is. And so once we have this, now it's time to add the code to our coin pickup feature. And so I'm going to go to our player controller script and open it in Visual Studios. Once you have it open in Visual Studios, there's a few variables that we're going to add. So up at the top of the script, underneath all the other variables that we've created, the first one that we're going to create is an int value to store the total amount of coins that we've picked up. And so I'm going to make this a pri uh, public variable. And then we're going to type int, which is a whole number. And then I'm going to type coin score. And I'm going to spell it with a lowercase c, coin score. The next variable that we need to create is a UI text variable. And this is going to be a variable that holds the text object that we created in Unity. And that way we can update the value of that text object. And to do this, the first thing that we need to do is up at the top, outside our player controller class, we need to add a new namespace. And so we're going to type using and then Unity engine and then dot UI. And this makes it so that you can then access the different data types that Unity has created that deal with the UI elements or UI components of our objects in the hierarchy. And so once I add that, now I can go back to where we're declaring our variables and type public and then text with a capital T. And this is going to be our coin text uh, variable. So once you've created these two new variables, it's time to create a new function. And this function is a special Unity function. And so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of our script. And to find the function that we need to use, we can go to the Unity scripting API. And so I have the page brought up right here. The function that we're going to be using is one that we've used before in other tutorials, but it's called onTriggerEnter. And so if you need to find this page, you can search Unity and then on trigger enter, and it should bring up this page. You could also search Unity Collider, and it'll bring up this page. And then you can scroll down to the messages and find where it says on trigger enter, and click on that one, and it'll bring you to the same page. But once you find this page, it, what we need to do is just copy this line where it says void on trigger enter and then parentheses collider other and then curly brace. We can copy that line and go back to our script. The reason why I'm copying this line straight from the 
Unity scripting API is because the name of this function needs to be spelled exactly the way they have it spelled in their scripting API, including the capital letters. So I'm going to paste this function down at the bottom and add a, a closing curly brace. So another important thing that you need to have is this exact same parameter. So it's a collider with the name other. And so once we've added this function to our script, it's now time to add an if statement. And the if statement is going to be to check to see what the object was that we collided with. And so I'm going to type if and then other. And what we want to do is say dot transform and then tag. And the reason why is because if we were to use the object's name, sometimes the name of objects change. They change when you instantiate objects. It'll say, oh, this is the name of the prefab, but then it'll say, this is a clone. And so it's really important that we want to use the tag because once you tag a prefab with a specific string value, that string value will never change unless you change it yourself. And so we're using other to get the other object. And then in order to get to the tag, we want to type dot transform, and then we can say dot tag. And we want to check to see if it's equal to the string value of coin. And I'm spelling it with a capital C because that's how I spelled it when I created the tag for the coin prefab. Once we have this if condition, we can add curly braces. So inside this if statement, the first thing that we want to do is increment our player's coin score or the variable that we created to hold the amount of coins our player has picked up. And so to do this, I'm going to type coin score and then plus plus and semicolon. This line of code is the same thing as saying coin score score equals coin score plus one. And so in other words, we're taking the value that's currently stored in our coin score and we're adding one to that value and then we're resaving it in the variable coin score. Once we have this line of code, the next thing that we need to do is update the value that is being displayed with our coin score text object. And so I'm going to say coin text to get the variable. And then we want to say dot text to get the value of the of what's being displayed. And we're going to set it equal to our coin score. Whoops, not coin text coin score. And then we need to say dot to string. And the reason why we need to say dot to string is because the text value of our coin text component is a string data type. And so in order to save a string data type in it, we need to change the int value of our coin score variable to a string. And that's what this function does. Once we've done this, the last thing that we need to do is destroy the coin object so that we can't run into it again. And so to do that, I'm going to say destroy, which is a function that Unity has already predetermined and, and defined. And so to destroy the coin object that we collide with, I'm going to say other, which is the parameter variable name. And then I'm going to say dot game object to make sure that we're passing the same data type that the function is looking for. And then I'm going to leave that with a semicolon and we can go ahead and save this. And then we go back to Unity, and inside Unity, we need to make sure that we specify what value we want to store in our coin text variable. And so I'm going to select our main player object, and then right here down at the bottom of our player controller script, you can see this coin text is set to none. And so if we were to run this script every time we ran into a coin, we'd get a null reference error because we don't have this value initialized. And so to initialize it, I'm going to find our coin score object, which is attached to our canvas object, and I'm going to drag it into that field. 
Once we've done that, we can then go ahead and hit play and test out this script. So here we have our player and he's running along and anytime I run into one of these sphere or coin objects, it's incrementing the score. So I'm at two and then three and four. So we just completed the coin pickup feature for our Mario Run game, which is really cool, but right now there's a few things missing. So there's no art for our, our game right now. There's no art for our character and there's no art for our coins. And so later on we can replace the boring cubes and spheres and capsules with proper art. And we're gonna be doing that eventually. But for our coins, we could add a cool coin art asset and we could even add a animation to that art asset. We could have like a spin or like a little bounce or something like that. And then also we could add a cool particle effect when our player picks it up. And so if it's a coin, we could have like sparkles that go or if it's a star, we could have, I don't know, an explosion or something like that. And so those are all cool things that we're gonna be adding to our game later on. But for right now, you can pat yourself on the back for completing the coin pickup and also having the score of how many coins your character has picked up displayed on your game. Because it's, it's one thing to have it saved in a variable and you can see it in the inspector and be like, oh yeah, the, the score is incrementing. And it's another thing to display it so that when you build the game, users will be able to see exactly what score they're currently at or how many coins they've picked up. So thank you so much for watching this video and following along. We hope you enjoyed it and that it was easy to follow along. If there was anything that was confusing, make sure that you leave your questions in the comments below. Make sure that you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.